In today's abandoned video, we are documenting the abandoned Wheatsheaf shopping centre in Rochdale, England that unfortunately closed down during the pandemic. The large and popular mall had been in operation for 30 years, providing more than 15,000 square metres of space for 26 tenants, as well as a two-storey library at its peak. Many key anchor brands had vacated the centre in the last few years, and only two remain today. Join us as we venture inside the unique property to discover what remains. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Last time, we asked the question should somebody be allowed to step in to stop a viable structure becoming dilapidated? We had some great responses, but the one that stood out for us was this comment from Jez, suggesting that after five years of dereliction, properties like the home are forced sold to the council, who can help bring them back to their former glory. This time, we want to know how could things have been done differently to protect leisure and retail sites during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us know what you think to possibly feature in our next upload. Recently, we discovered the sad news that Rochdale's beloved Wheatsheaf shopping centre had shut its doors during the second lockdown in Christmas 2020. We noted the structure as one to scout at a later date, but expected it to be well maintained as such a major development in the middle of the town. When we eventually got the chance to visit the mall, we didn't anticipate the abandoned appearance it had gained so quickly. Doors and windows were boarded and overgrowth was out of control in the brickwork. Walking the quiet streets of Rochdale, it felt like something was missing. Even the shopping centre's 160 free space car park was unused and looking a little worse for wear. Until reaching the summit, we had believed that we could be the first to enter the building since closure, however eyeing up the smashed glass on the ground, it seemed that we had lost that challenge with the locals. We would first manage to infiltrate the two floor library adjoined to the rooftop of the Wheatsheaf Centre, which would also include staff offices. The power's on. Yeah, it is. I feel like it'll be quite empty, but still cool all the same. We need to find a way down. And thankfully we did. Soon enough we were stood on the derelict side of the main entrance, excited to see what state the mall had been left in. Depends who's watching them. Cameras are all on. Flashing green light like it's recording because it's on a sensor. We'll see what happens. It's really fascinating here. We've got a shop that isn't abandoned, but we are on its abandoned side. And it's still got the sale signs up, but they haven't took them down in there. It's very weird. You can see people passing by in the high street too. Anyways. Oh 
while. It's very similar to the shop we did in Ireland. The floor pattern. All the shop fronts are still here. You can see escalators down there too. It appeared that a lot of the floor space was being used for storage of construction materials, possibly from the stripping of some of the shop's interiors. Into our first shop, Fizz Bomb. I feel like this would have been bath and shower cosmetics. It appears that some work has gone on. Gone on. Wherever that was before, the entire shopping centre closed as the many different tenants started to leave. There's hardly any evidence left of what these shops once were. This would have been clothes. It definitely would have been clothes. Look at all these hangers. mountain of them. Whole staff room here. Oh actually this was changing rooms but the little cubicles have been stripped out. This is gonna be the main skyline. Step over this police tape. Wow. This is amazing, isn't it? Wheatsheaf was constructed as a purpose-built shopping centre in 1991, offering 15,130 square metres of accommodation over five levels. As for the mall itself, there was space for 26 tenants on the ground and second floor, including big names such as Argos, Peacocks, Ryman's and Wilco's during its period of occupancy. The international movement from in-store shopping to online has devastated many shopping centres and clearly affected this one, assisted by the coronavirus pandemic. Unfortunately, as none of the tenants were classed as essential retail during the first lockdown, the entire shopping centre would close for months. When the site reopened in June, the visitor numbers dropped by 45% and wouldn't increase as the country went into a second lockdown in winter, where the mall became silent once more. Tenants had been dropping out since 2017, and in 2020 when five more large names left, the financial viability of the shopping centre was no longer sustainable. An announcement was made in November 2020 that the centre would not reopen after the second lockdown. Some bigger brands down here. Can tell by the size of the shop. But absolutely nothing remains. Besides the odd light on in weird places usually. It's eerily quiet in here. Peacock's tail there. Still have the signs up. And mannequins through the window in here. Another clove shop. I feel like you can tell when it's a bigger brand because they remove 
all signs of branding. This might be the leading tenant of the shopping centre. There's a lot more to this place than I thought. The signs featuring social distancing and face mask requests are a common visual in most leisure sites we have come across recently, but the shopping centre was particularly covered in them. I wonder if Covid was the thing that killed this shopping centre off. A lot of leisure places didn't make it past it. And from the signs in here it seems that this one was still stuck in that time frame. I love the way the sunset lights up the wall there because of the reflective material they used. There's an Argos up here. Jesus. I think what makes these places so cool is that the architecture is so different to anything else. It was a beautiful yet sad scene to stomach, imagining how many shoppers would have walked up those escalators over the mall's lengthy duration of use. For the majority of its lifespan, the complex was very popular with the people of Rochdale, presenting yearly Christmas talent shows, fashion competitions and charity events. It's such a shame to see a beloved location have such a fall from grace, comparing the empty atrium with old videos of it brimming with life in the past. This one here is not abandoned. Whatsoever. Just closed for the evening. It's a good job we came at this time. But probably should st stray away from that. So weird though how it just connects to an abandoned shopping center. Only two tenants active still have a connection to the defunct Wheat Chief Center, but primarily use their street facing entrance. Clearance, 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 clearance. Everywhere was getting rid of its stock. Mannequins do freak me out at times. Just fitting rooms though here. Inside the abandoned Argos. There's a fair bit left to be fair. See the areas where the catalogues were kept. And you'd imagine around the back there'd be a, a large area where the products were held before people ordered them. It's a quick pay machine. 
Or the shell of one. It's still there. I uh, found the back. Yeah, this is where everything would have been kept. I feel like it would have been hard to find certain products in this massive space. They have cleared the shelves though, and the shelves themselves. Clark's room. Here's the huge safe. One of the offices around the back. Calendar on the wall says March 2020. Not sure why, but I feel like this section was used more recently. Maybe as an art show. Look at this, though. Oh my god. I love old architecture, but Sometimes it does really connect with me when it's quite a modern building. Because I guess I'm more familiar with them. Especially when there's no one here though. It offers so much photo opportunity. With the sunset glaring through as well, this is quite breathtaking. These escalators are genuinely on, by the way. Someone with a key could make them move. But look at this window up close. Although it's modern, you feel like this was an iconic site for anyone that came to this mall. And it just amplifies how sad it is that something this big and important in people's lives can just close and be left vacant. Down there at the front entrance, you can see that work is going on, definitely. Probably the clearest point we've seen that throughout this whole explore. Around the corner, there's jackets worn by the builders that come in every now and then. So I think this is probably where we leave it. Already so happy with what we've come away with here. It really feels like a, a real insight into this building. Look at the top story. Here you can appreciate the huge glass skylight and look down into what is a very apocalyptic setting. The Wheat Chief Centre's future is quite uncertain, with proposals for its demolition in the process of building a new residential area, as well as conversion into a retail, medical or leisure outlet. It is being sold for just under £3 million, but has had no offers as of now. Currently it sits abandoned, but in a contained way. We doubt it will be allowed to demise further, later discovering a security team are involved. Hopefully it will be bought soon by somebody with the high aspirations it deserves, so the people of Rochdale can witness the important structure welcoming visitors again.
We hope you liked our coverage. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe to never miss a future upload. Here are some of our photographs captured inside the disused shopping centre. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we share images of locations months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you have ever been inside this building when it was in use and have any fond memories, let us know in the comments. See you next time.